So the next thing I want to do is to move the box. And the note I want to give myself is app screen is 320 by 450. And the reason why I want to note that is because I want to be able to move my box all over the screen. It wouldn't do if I had to just had to guess it. I you know looked at these things in advance. So like here, you can see the crosshairs tell us where we are. So here's like zero, X zero, and the width of this is like 320, right? Uh, if I go to the bottom of the screen, it's like 450. So you can see that Y450. So that tells me, that's just kind of reminding me so that I, when I do math with this stuff, um, I can I know what, what my values are. I'm gonna make another note here that the UI at the top of the screen uh, is 25 pixels. And that is going to be important to know so that the top of our box won't overlap with the user interface. And knowing the screen size prevents us from having the box go outside of our game stage. As you can see, the box currently has a top and left position of 50 pixels each. We want to make sure that we change those values appropriately. I'm going to have to do some math in order for its registration point and the width of its body to stay on the screen. We're going to now create a variable the left. And the reason why I'm choosing left and width first is because that's how these items are being passed. So um, as you can see here in set size, B width, B height. So B left equals, and we're going to get our random number. So get random and, and we're going to pass it a value of zero because we can definitely be flush with the left hand side. And then what we want is 320 minus whatever the width of the box is. So that's going to be B width. And then var uh, B top. So this is going to be the top that's going to be vertically placed equals, and we're going to use get random int. And that's minimum value is going to be 25. And the maximum value is going to be 450 minus the height, so B height. Okay, now that I've done that, so it's basically saying, hey, you, you define these, but you haven't called them yet. Uh, we're going to call them right now. And the UI controls, I believe there is a set position. So there it is. And you can see here we've got four arguments. Well, one of them happens to be like our ID. So we're going to use click box again. And here's our X, right? Well, our X is going to be B left. And here's our Y. Our Y is going to be B top. And then these values, we can actually just go ahead and do the height and the width right here. We don't have to set it in set size because our set position allows us to do both, set the position and the size of this element. So let's just go ahead and do that. B width and then B height. I'm gonna go ahead and comment out this guy. Even though it's gonna be the same value, there's no reason for me to set the size twice. If I can do it in one function, I will. So let's do that. Let's try it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run. I'm going to hit play and I'm going to click this box. Oh, look, it changes. Isn't that nice? All right. And every time I click it, the score goes up. It changes position. It changes size. Um, there you go. All right. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and keep using my get random int. So I'll just copy this right quick. Actually, let's copy it from the equals. Command C. And I am going to var R, uh, command V, and instead of 0 to 60, I want it 0 to 255 because I'm going to be making an RGB value. So var G, uh, same thing. Command V, I'm going to change it 0. 255 and then var b be again 0 to 255. So set the color of the background. Color of background set property 
So the arguments are um, ID, property, and the value you want to set it to. The ID is the click box. Uh, the next item is background color. So we can even just click over here as a background color, comma. And then last but not least, we can do RGB. And I'll just like grab this guy, RGB. And then I can just pass in, instead of the numbers, I can actually just pass in R, G, and B. Since code.org gives us this RGB function, it's easy for us to just pass those var values in as variables. All right, so now that we've got all this, let's give this another test. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. I'm gonna click on this guy. Oh, look, it changes color. Fantastic. So, cool. What I'm gonna do right now is um, remind myself of the design flaw of that item. So game screen, let's click on this box. Let's make sure that the element has um, not just a background color, but a border. So let's go ahead and do one. And the border color is not gonna be that. It's gonna just be black. So now, Let's go ahead and go back to our code. Let's go ahead and run. Let's go ahead and hit play. All right, so we've got our border now. Um, you know, conceivably it could run off the side of the border with the border um, over here, but I, you know, that's like a little quibble, right? Um, not gonna worry about that too much. All right, so now you can see we've got our functionality. We can definitely see our box, no matter what color it is, against the white background. Um, so that's good. The only thing that we don't have is this seconds, this timer going off that's like counting down the seconds. All right, so that's the next thing. That's the end of part three. In this part, we touched on variables and functions and talked about arguments. We'll work on the timer in the next video. Anyway, I hope this was fun and informative. Happy coding, everyone. See you in the next video.